Hey friends, Matt aka Martiln here and today I'm going to show you a cool little quick trick to give virtually any virtual synth effectively unlimited voices inside of Ableton Live by getting around pretty much any polyphony limitation that your synth might have. Before we get into it, if you like this video, make sure to drop a like down below as well as a comment, subscribe if you're new and if you enjoy my content, feel free to head on over to my Buy Me A Coffee page where you can buy me a coffee, become a member, support me, the channel, help me create more cool stuff like this and uh, get some cool stuff in the process. So without any further ado, let's jump into Ableton Live and let me show you how to do this technique. Okay, so this technique I'm about to show you is kind of fun. It's pretty impractical really for the most part, but I thought that it'd be a really interesting technique to show you because it showcases some really cool capabilities of racks, instrument racks specifically inside of Ableton Live. It might also take some fiddling to get it to work properly however you want, but again, it's a cool technique kind of impractical, but a little bit of fun. So let me show you how to do it. Here we are inside of Ableton Live and I have a wavetable patch here, which is a really simple wavetable patch with a MIDI clip that is playing eight notes in an ascending pattern right here. I'm gonna use this to demonstrate this working. But before we get into that, we need to explain how polyphony works, particularly inside of Wavetable, but also inside of, generally speaking, any other synthesizer. So if I come down to Wavetable, we can see on the right-hand side here, we have this poly section right here. If I click this button, we go between poly and mono, and we have a drop-down menu here, which is the poly voices. And basically what this means is that currently Wavetable can play polyphonically, which means it can play more than one note or voice at once. And the amount of voices that it can play at once is determined by this poly voices, which can either be two, three, four, five, six, seven, or eight in the case of Wavetable. Now, different synthesizers can have different amounts of voices, like, you know, things like Vital and Serum can go up pretty high, Phase Plant can go up pretty high. Um, Wavetable in this particular instance is limited to eight. And we're going to look at how we can actually overcome this if we want to. But to demonstrate how it works really quickly, let's play this pattern that I have in this current wavetable patch. Now this wavetable patch that we have has a really long release and because there are eight notes, we're gonna hear them all played and hung over one another. So let's play this and hear what it sounds like. And we can hear that they all hang over one another. Each of those eight notes hang over with the release tail. Now, if I change this all the way down to two, we're actually only gonna hear the last two notes that are played hanging over one another. Take a careful listen. We actually only get the last two notes. If I change this to say four, we'll only get the last four notes. And this is a good representation of how polyphony works. But let's say I had all these eight notes right here and I wanted to add in another note. So if I wanted to add in a ninth note, for instance, let's do that. Let's add in a ninth note right here. And now what's gonna happen is when this ninth note plays, this first note is gonna go out of the pattern. We're not gonna be able to hear that first note anymore. We lose the first note that's being played. But if I want to have all of them playing, there's a way that we can do this using instrument racks. So what I'm gonna do here is right click on the wavetable device title bar and click on group. And then we're gonna actually open up the chain list and click on the key zone editor. And what this allows us to do is change which incoming MIDI notes actually go into which chain in our chain list. Maybe you can see where this is going. So now what I can do, we currently have eight notes on this wavetable that are available for us to play. So instead of having this particular wavetable take up the entirety of the key zone or all of our available MIDI notes, we can actually make this only mapped to a certain section of the MIDI keyboard effectively. Now, depending on how many notes and voices and stuff you want played, you can change this key zone to be kind of wherever you like, but let's, for the sake of this, make it so we have a zone for every eight notes of the MIDI keyboard. Now, because we don't wanna to go too low here, I'm actually just gonna start at C negative one, and we're gonna count up eight notes from there. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
and then I'm just gonna duplicate this chain. So I can right click and duplicate this chain and then just click and drag this zone over a little bit. Now I'm gonna do the exact same and I'm gonna duplicate this and click and drag this over, duplicate this, click and drag this over, duplicate this, click and drag this over and so on and so forth. And so I haven't filled up the entirety of the key zone range here, but now for the most part, we have a different wave table, different version of this synthesizer assigned to different eight note sections of our keyboard. So now if I want to play that ninth note, we'll be able to. And that will be playing across all of these different wavetable devices right here. And if I wanted to add even more notes, maybe I could add some higher notes as well. Maybe I could add some here and add on some further notes coming out of here too. Maybe even have one kind of down here as well. And we can have all these different notes playing at once. And unless we have more than eight notes being triggered within one of these different zones, we can effectively have unlimited voices for this synthesizer. But now comes the issue if, if I want to control the parameters of the synthesizer. Say for instance, I want to open up the filter over the course of this particular pattern or later on in the song or something like that. Well, I'd have to open up the filter on each and every single one of these different wavetables. You see, if I open up the filter in this wavetable, it doesn't open it up in this wavetable. But there's a way that we can get around this using macros. So what I can do is go to one of my wavetables and I can go to whatever the parameter is that I want to control. I can right click it and I can map it to a macro. Let's just use macro one in this instance. And now we have that particular parameter mapped to macro one on our instrument rack, but that's only for that particular wavetable device. However, what we can do is we can now go to that parameter that we macro mapped, we can right click it, and now we have an option down the bottom that says map to all siblings. And this is going to take that mapping of filter frequency one applied to macro one and put it on all of the different instances of wavetable inside of our instrument rack. So if I click this, map to all siblings, now if I go to a different wavetable, we can see that all of the filter frequencies on all of our wavetables are all mapped to macro one. And if I move this first macro here, we're moving the filter frequency on all of our different wavetable devices inside of this instrument rack. And because we can have up to 16 macros, we can do this for up to 16 different parameters across our wavetable, effectively giving us a 16 parameter synthesizer that we can control with effectively unlimited voices. Now, if you want to overcome this from the get-go, you can actually, when you group the wavetable, or whatever synthesizer it is, then you can instantly in this initial part, before you create any of the key zones, you can map any of the parameters you want here to a macro. Say I wanted filter frequency one, the resonance, maybe wavetable one position, maybe the wavetable two position as well. And any of the other parameters in here as well, potentially the volume, map that to like macro eight or something like that. And now whenever we go in and duplicate a chain, for instance, if we opened up the key list here, maybe made this so it just took up a single zone here and we duplicated this wavetable. When we duplicate this wavetable, all of those mappings are gonna carry over to the duplicated version of the wavetable as well. So now we can do this. And also side note, if you want to have effectively unlimited voices, you can have one synthesizer per note and that will grant you pretty much effectively unlimited voices on any synthesizer. But obviously you might wanna watch out for your CPU usage if you are doing that. So for instance, if I wanted to have an instrument rack with effectively unlimited voices, I could have 128 different instances of my synthesizer, each one assigned to an individual note here inside of the key zone editor of our chain list and have the 16 parameters that I wanted to map across all of those synthesizers mapped to 16 macros of the instrument rack. I could save that as a preset and then pull it up whenever I wanted a synthesizer that had effectively unlimited voices. 
Now, of course, this technique is a little bit weird and it is a little bit impractical, as I mentioned, but hopefully you learned some things from this and maybe if you decide to use this, it could overcome some kind of limitations of your synthesizer if you're running into an issue where you want nine voices, but you can only have eight in a particular synthesizer, such as with Wavetable. So there you have it. There is a really cool technique for overcoming effectively any polyphony limitation that your chosen synth might have when using Ableton Live. If you enjoyed the video, make Make sure to of course leave a like and a comment down below, subscribe if you're new and feel free to head on over to my buy me a coffee page where you can buy me a coffee, support this channel and if you'd like to check out more of my content feel free to click here to check out a recent video, otherwise I'll see you in the next one.